So today we are going to talk about research ideas. Every now and then we see some students asking about relevant research ideas and I'm talking about economics right now and uh, they usually ask for relevant research ideas for their MPhil thesis, master's studies or writing a research paper, sometimes even for a PhD. So in this video I'm going to talk about back in my days when I was doing my MPhil how I used to search for research topics. So this is not coming out of any book or something, this is purely from my research experience and um, I hope that this video will give you some ideas how to search for your own research topics. So basically I'm going to talk about four points that you have to think about. So number one point is novelty. Of course everybody knows that. Second point is relevancy. So your topic should be relevant. It doesn't matter if it is for your own country or a pool of countries or even a specific subgroup of a country. It should be a relevant topic. And third point is even if your idea is novel and it is relevant, if it is not doable then it is good for nothing. So your idea should be relevant, novel and also doable. Doable meaning that if it is based on a primary research, you should have funds for conducting that primary research or if it is based on secondary data, then you should have access to that secondary data. So this is what we mean by doability. And fourth and last point in this list is marketability. Marketability, of course, you're writing a research paper or a thesis. So marketability does not mean to sell it, but in terms of acceptability. So your topic should be good enough for journals to accept it. I'm right now I'm talking about good quality journals. So impact factor journals. So if your idea is outdated and your methodology is not really up to the mark according to the current standards, then no good journal will accept your papers. So just to recap, number one novelty, number two relevancy, number three doability and number four marketability. So these four points you have to think about when choosing a research topic. So now that we know about those four different characteristics of a good research topic, let's talk about the practicality of things. So it's very easy to say that you need a novel research idea that is relevant and doable, but how to really approach it? So most of you might be the young graduates who are coming out or even within the process of your graduation and uh, you might be thinking that how to really narrow it down to a certain research topic. Naturally, most of the students think about economic growth because all the time in macroeconomics we talk about economic growth and uh, even the micro foundations eventually lead to economic growth. So naturally we think about economic growth and we try to link everything with it. But it's not always the best idea to just put economic growth on the left side of the equation and then try to estimate something. So how to go about it? So first thing that you need to do is to think about the scope of the study. So if you want to do a multi-country study, multiple continents, multiple regions, uh, or you want to do a study on one specific country. So for example, if I'm from Pakistan and I want to do something on Pakistan, then uh, how to approach a topic. So what I do or what I used to do back in my days when I was a student uh, was that I used to read World Bank reports, United Nations reports on Pakistan. Anything that is related to economy of Pakistan that could also be the newspaper, the business side of the newspaper that actually tells you what the current economic problems are. Some of the problems are age old. There are many research papers on them, but uh, some of the problems are actually new. And those new stories can give you an idea for a research topic, a potential research topic that you can work on. So World Bank country reports, United Nations, UNDP country reports, something like this. Even in the table of contents, you will see different sections of the economy and they will talk about how your country is doing in one particular area, say trade, fiscal side of the economy, monetary side, knowledge economy, agriculture, health economy, and so on and so forth. So first thing I would suggest you is to find an area that is of interest to you. Of course, you are a student and you might be thinking, okay, everything interests me and not interests me at the same time. What should I do? So 
try to read the executive summary at least of these reports. Try to see if something particular interests you. I, for example, I'm not a big fan of studies on finance, for example. I'm not saying that finance is not a good field of study. It's just not my cup of tea. You need to have an interest to dig deeper into a research topic. So find something that, are, that is of interest to you. It is very, very important because if you are doing it for masters, you have to live with that topic for one year. If you are doing it for your PhD, you have to live with that topic for three to four years. If in your PhD for four years, if you are stuck with a topic that was given to you by your supervisor, then I'm sure that you'll not enjoy your research very much and uh, you'll find it difficult to complete your PhD. And even if you do, it will not be of a very good quality because even when you are sleeping, I'm talking from experience, even when you're sleeping, when you're doing a PhD, your brain is working. You're thinking about, okay, how about if I link this variable with that? If I do this kind of methodology, how about this? How about that? And that's where novelty comes from. So you start with a report, for example, you say, okay, I like human capital. I like knowledge economics. Let's start there. And then you go to Google Scholar and you write, for example, when you were reading a report on Pakistan, they said human capital is the thing for tomorrow. We have to invest in it. And the, you will find some statistics that Pakistan is lagging behind, for example. And you can search that keyword human capital, low enrollment rates, for example, growth and search on Google Scholar. You'll find a bunch of papers. Find let's say papers from three years ago right now we are sitting in february 2020 so three years ago 2017 2016 even four years approximately you set that uh, time period on left hand side of the google scholar window and then you search for the recent papers on that topic find relevant recent studies in good journals one of the key indicators of good journals is impact factor but the rule of thumb is also citations. So if there is a paper that was published in 2017 and it has, let's say 10, 15 citations up till now on Google Scholar, it is already an indication that it's a good enough paper because people are reading it, not only reading it, but also citing it. So 10, 15, 20 citations, they're not many, but they, are, they give you a good indication. The best way to do is, is to open that link and look into the journal that this paper is published in. So copy the name of the journal and look in the master journal list of clarivate.com. You'll see the website at the bottom and then see if that journal is listed there. If it is listed, then it is a sign that it is a good journal. Download that paper and start reading it. One very important key thing to remember is that if this is a very recent paper, in the reference list, you'll find many other papers that are relevant to your research topic. So download all these papers and start reading. You'll start making up your mind about what the recent current status quo is about the knowledge that you are digging into. When you start reading, you'll have a broad understanding of what your question is. But when you start reading, you dig deeper into what other authors have done each and every paper has been written after years and years of experience and work, hard work, co-authorship, sharing of ideas and so on. So in 18, 19, 20 pages, you'll find a lot of information that is a result of a lot of effort and energy. So you'll gain a lot of information from there. So this is a long process and slowly, 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 you'll understand what your narrow area of research is. Keep asking the question why. So if author is saying why affects X in certain way, you should ask yourself why is that? So if author is explaining it, then so think about how it could affect things differently. What are the conditionalities? What is the mediating role of some other Z variable that could affect this relationship between the two? What is What are the mediators? What are the moderators? What are the conditionalities? Is this relationship specific to the country that this study is covering, the paper that you're reading, or is it generalizable to every country in the world? Is it context specific and so on? So you have to start digging into a research topic from this broad umbrella of those economics reports or newspapers 
articles that guide you towards a research topic, go to Google Scholar, find those relevant recent papers, read them, look into the references, find other relevant papers to that topic, and then naturally you'll start to build up a knowledge base. Novelty will come slowly, it will not just pop out of somewhere, it comes from reading and doability because there are other studies on the same topic, it means it's doable as well. More you read, more ideas will come, it's a natural process. If you find a deadlock, it's natural, it happens to everyone, don't worry about it. Keep in mind that you have to keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Asking somebody else for a research idea is not a really good idea because they will give you what interests them. So if you ask me about a research idea, I will give you an idea that came to me because I was working on my research area. It might not be of interest to you. So find something that interests you and then dig deeper into it. Find something relevant for yourself and you'll enjoy doing that research. So if you borrow an idea from somebody else, there is a high likelihood that you will lose interest in six months time or so. So that's what this video was about. I hope you liked the video. Until next video, see you then. Bye-bye.